the top of the club uh, Before I get the just mention my goals are some that I'm trying to make achievements. I'm tired of dying now. Life ain't nothing but pain. Hey, what's, what's going on, man? How you doing? I'm doing good, man. Thanks for having me up on uh, up on here. Oh man, yeah, my bad about yesterday, man. I'm trying to get this radio station <laughs> together, man, and I'm having meetings with 107.1. You know, get trying to get records and everything clear from you know independent labels and everything like that. So it's like, hey man, <laughs> so, the grind never stops, man. You gotta do what you gotta do, right? Yeah, most definitely. How you do? <laughs> how, how you doing tonight, man? You all right? Yeah, not bad. I'm just chilling on there, chilling here with this vape right here. Okay. So, uh, before we get started, where, where you from, man? Where, where you from? I'm from Philly. You from? How did you uh, get? Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, I I like Detroit. Like I've I've always liked music from Detroit and uh, just like the influence of sound coming from Detroit from a young age. Okay. You know. Um, I learned about everybody through another artist. So I learned about one artist, which leads me to the next, lead me to the next, lead me to the next, you know? Okay. All right. And by a certain time, you, you kind of understand, like, what kind of music is out there. Okay. All right. Yeah. Cool. So I was about to say, how did you get a feature from from the members of Insane Clown Posse, man? That was crazy. Yeah, they, they're, they're like, I mean... Most of the features I've seen them do is like bigger dudes or like bigger people. Uh huh. And I just happen to I just happen to know the right person. Okay. You know, there's there's always there's always somebody behind the scenes. So I just managed to know the right person that could make that connection happen. You know. Yeah, most definitely. <laughs> so yeah, because that shocked me, man. And then you emailed me, so I was like, oh, hold on, let me go ahead, let me go ahead. At first, I listened to like the first uh, verse. And I was like, oh, man, hold on. I got to do a reaction to it. I got to. Because the video is dope. Like, who who did that video? Did you do that? Or who, what's up? I didn't go. Uh, we got, uh, we got, I got a guy that I found off of Facebook from Cali. And he had done some, he had done some work on some, some shows, some Hulu shows. He'd done work on something called The Great North. Okay. It's like an animated show. And so I'm like, how can I fit this guy into my budget? Because like, what a lot of people don't know is like, animation's expensive as shit. Yeah, it <laughs> you know, it's like, <sighs> I mean, you can easily crunch like ten thousand dollars on one episode. Wow, a thirty minute episode of a show, you know, it's it's easy to spend that kind of money. So I, I had I had a certain amount in budget, and he worked <clears throat> worked around that, you know. Okay. All right. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, and then that's just good. But speaking of Detroit, like, you're from Detroit, and, like, yeah. I gotta say, man, I got one of the coolest deals when I was in Detroit, because you guys have so many medical places. Like, yep. I'm not, I mean, not medical, um, recreational. Oh, recreational, yeah, yeah. So, anybody, anybody can stop on over, and, like, it's crazy, but I found a place around there that was selling the, the vape carts. They mm -hmm. were selling five vape carts for $100. That's just unheard of. Yes, Anywhere else, you would man. never get that. I, I, I'm going to tell, tell you like I tell a lot of out of town. You might you might have got a deal, but they they took the major risk of, 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 get, of getting that product. You know what I'm talking about? So you just got the deal. So it was like a quick buck to them, but a deal to you. You feel what I mean? So that's how they work in the city, man. That's how they work. Yeah, it's, a, it's a definite deal because, like, I remember, like, going, like, around here. The only place I ever found was, like, uh, it was, like, kind of like a speakeasy. You okay. Know? So, like, you basically, they take you back there. They had a little garage. You go back over there, and they have this shop set up and stuff. I spent $60 on, like, about, you know, a small little cigar. Yeah. And it was nice though because it had key fall over it. But these guys could charge me sixty bucks for that one thing just because they knew yeah. that that was like an underground place. Like you had to know somebody that knew about it. Yep. You know? Exactly, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> their money. <laughs> yep. But uh, how, how long you been doing music, man? How long you been? How, how... Music's like, I mean. um I say, man, I've definitely been doing it for over 15 years now. As far as like mm -hmm. the the moment 
you first put out a song to like now, you know, that's been at least a 15 year stretch. Oh, okay. You know, it's been, been a long time. Yeah. Oh, man. It's, it's definitely been a while. Yeah. Because, you know? uh, I mean, yeah, because, you know, it, it always going to be, you know, you know, overnight success don't happen all the time. You know what oh, I'm saying? Never. But it's like. Never. And that's. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, but yeah, yeah. overnight success don't happen all the time. I like I told this to one one artist I, I had interviewed. I was like, I started doing music. Well, I started investing my investing my time and everything into music like in two thousand eight. I didn't really get no major features until like two thousand and ten. So it was like it it seemed as short, but you got to understand this. I lived in the studio for right. almost. Four months, you know what I'm saying. So it was like, yeah, that, that was it, and yeah. So it was like, so it was like me trying everything. Like I rapped over different beats and everything like that. I tried to make everything happen because I was forcing myself to rap. You get what I mean? But you, you did the right thing though. On yeah. on like, because that's like a, a rookie mistake. I would say is that you want to like reach out and get features, and and you're not even like. You know, you're not even developed as far as your own sound yet. Yeah. But you want to take the time to get those features, and it's like you're gonna regret it later on. Yeah. I know I did. I, I did that, and and like you know, you just feel like man, I could have worked that so much harder if I had more people listening to me. Right. You know, like. Yeah. But that's me, that's. Me, <laughs> yeah. I think everybody does that. Yeah. <laughs> It be, it's quite a few, cause uh, I definitely when I when I, cause it's like when you first get the feature, it's like okay, my my first feature for a song, I'm gonna say this, it was a, uh, it was it was Frank Ocean, you know what it is? That was my first yeah, feature, yeah, and <clears throat> and the crazy, yeah, the crazy part is it was a song called Drink on Me, but I pushed it for Detroit Radio. Detroit Radio passed it up. It was a good record. But I ended up performing it live in Hollywood. So it's like, that was, you know what I'm saying? So, <clears throat> other than, and then I didn't even know who Frank Ocean was. So it was like, this was around, around the time when the mixtape area, area was like real heavy. Everybody was doing the mixtape. You know, even if, even famous people were trying to blend in with it. But, you know, yeah, so it was like I really didn't know who Frank Ocean was. My engineer was his engineer, and I didn't know that. So it was like, okay. <clears throat> you know, it's, it's crazy because like it's it boils down to like that connection with that person, right? Yeah. And like it's it it just sucks because you could have the craziest collab you want, but like if you don't really know how you're gonna push it, it doesn't yeah. even matter if you have it, right? You really know. <clears throat> like that. Cause you know the only outlet around that time was like live mixtapes, all the little mixtapes. Yeah, yeah, that was it. So I was like, it really been yeah. I mean, the only thing I got out of it was Hollywood performance. That was it. And I was shocked. See, that's that, a lifetime memory. Yeah. And the crazy part was it was 25,000 people in there. I didn't even know 25,000 people knew that song. Damn. So, that's crazy. I always tell people, like, you never know who listening to you. You never know. You never, you never know. know. Like, that's... That's that's one thing I encourage some artists. Like some artists would be like, man, I don't know. I'm just trying to push. I'm like, look, man, you never know who listening to you. You never know. <laughs> never. I mean, you gotta be you gotta be on your p's and q's. You gotta always be like ready to like work for it though. Like you can never sit down and expect anything to, anything to come to you because it never will. No. Nah, Without no. hard work first, it'll no, never. Come no. To no. <laughs> Cause it's it's always that. Uh, but that video you sent me, man, uh, that that's that's gonna stick out because one, you don't really get a lot of you know independent artists that's actually got videos that's anime. You know what I mean? No, that's like that's another thing. That's a throwback. It's like the nineties. They had that shit. They had like videos in the late nineties. Yeah. Some animated rap videos, but. It just became dead. You know what? It became dead like uh, like playing like a side scrolling fighting game. Yeah. It just died out. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, cause that that's that's unique right there. And you know, you know, cause my my channel is all about the underrated, underground, up and coming. You you know that. So you know, so, cause uh, you know, I'm gonna say this: the underrated and the underground, up and coming artists are always gonna be like the. Uh, it's gonna be the fierce of the of the major of the majors, 
You know what I'm saying? They yeah. they fear yeah. they fear. That's what happens. Like that's when. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, go ahead. My bad. Oh, oh, you good? Go ahead. Uh, yeah, cause they <laughs> they 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 fear those they fear those two those three stages in music because one, you own everything. So therefore, when you drop yeah. something, there's no four or five other hands into it. It's all on you. You know what I mean? It's all yeah. yours. And two, the skill level. You don't have nobody in the studio trying to direct you what kind of song to make. or You know what I'm saying? Because I, I done right. seen it happen several times, man. Because I, I used I had a publishing deal with Atlantic Records in 2013. And okay. I seen a lot of artists get broken down in the studio session. Like, literally, they... I want... Wow. You know what I'm saying? And it was like, well, how can you be creative when you got somebody just... You might as well get a day job and clock in and have your supervisor all over your back all day. You know what I mean? That's true. So... It's, yeah, so... So he's just being... They were just being told, like, consistently what to do. What kind of music they make? I'm like, yo, you... They talent got them here. Why are you on just... Why are you just having it? But, you know... Who knows what people would do in that situation? Because you know what they always say. They always say, like, all you got to do is make that one big song. Get your foot in the door. And then once you make that one big song, you've got people listening to you, even if you don't even fucking matter. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. That's why That's why nowadays in today's world, like, with music, everybody's independent. Because it's like, you, you, not only that, not only that you're not trying to sign a deal, which is that's pretty much like a bank loan anyway, you know. But it's like, but it's like you rolling the dice with your own self, and then it's at your own comfortability. Because a lot of people got studios in their homes now. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, it's, it's so much easier. Yep. Yeah. Way much everything, easier. Everything, everything went down in price as far as like being able to record and all that. You know. Yeah, most definitely. But but did that did that make music go down in value? Who knows. I don't really think it did. I mean, I think like if an industry is going to go down, like the Titanic is going to go down. Don't have nothing to do with that, you know. Yeah, but to be honest with you, um, the the major labels is actually suffering more since Empire came around, and a lot of labels started to give artists that already have a team with them, like a a publishing deal and everything like that. So it's like, right, right, yeah. yeah. Yep. That's what I was. So yeah, so it's like yeah, so I that's the reason why I like Empire standing out more. Um what's the other one? Three hundred entertainment is standing out more now because it's like those labels are not only developing artists but giving artists like a like basically a open to do whatever you want to do because you know you you know it's yeah, that's the reason why yeah. <laughs> It's not even it's not even hard anymore, like, because really all you have to do, if you were one of those people, like, let's say you don't have labels anymore because people don't want to pay that much attention to you and do all that work. I get it. But it's so simple because all you really need to do is get somebody that has a good song, don't matter how big his name is, you know, and, and basically market that song to whatever audience they think it's going to hit. Yeah. I mean, these guys really have the power to make nine out of ten people big as fuck if they want to. Yeah. But, you know, it's it's about would they ever use it to actually help a motherfucker, you know? And yeah. the, the chance of that are very low, you know? Yep, well, definitely, yeah. It, it's just, you know, that's, that's why a lot of people finance themselves. And when, when a lot of rappers come out, you're like, yo, how did you get so big? Like, some people, they actually put that work in, but other people, they mm -hmm. just got big overnight. And you figured, okay, there's somebody bankrolling this operation. Yeah. You know, somebody's putting money into this because... yeah. For the fucking mm -hmm. love of me, I never heard of this motherfucker yeah. at all. Oh, yeah, yep. You know, <laughs> like when Twister made that si uh, song, Overnight Celebrity, people thought he got big overnight, but that was the irony of it, because it took him a long-ass time before he made that song. Yep. To get to where the fuck he was. Most definitely, yeah. You right on know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, he just went from, like, level 5 to level, like, 10. That, yeah, I agree with that, but yeah. he was still big before that. Yeah, you know? he was way big. <laughs> but, yeah, he just, yeah. just made a comeback. What was that? What was that? Uh, in the middle of 2000 or the beginning? I think it was 2000. Yeah, it was early. Yeah, early, yeah. early 2000. Early 2000, yeah. 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 But, yeah. He's always been dope, though. I like hearing him on Tech 9 songs. I've heard him on, like, I think two of them. To be honest with you, I, I don't know if you caught that in the reaction or I probably said it out over... 
when the camera went off, like, you, it's artists like you, um, Jesus, it's artists like you, and it's a guy go by the name of DG, he from California, y'all would sound good, like, w making a record with Tech 9 you get what I mean? Yeah, I mean, see, like, things like that, like, and see, that's not hard either, because of what you really gotta do is, again, you gotta talk about finances between artists, I mean, like, hey, you guys wanna put this song together with Tech, what can we, what can we agree, have them agree to do if you put the song out with them? Put yeah. it on the Spotify, da da da, you know, promote it. Yeah. All that good shit. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like I said, say, you never know, like, you know, you never you know. You never know. Cause, cause, cause you never know. let me see. <laughs> What 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 what's the numbers looking on that video? Because uh, I know it done went up so far. Yeah, you know what the thing about that is, like we pushed the fuck out of that on like on Facebook first, so it's like okay, you got like a hundred damn thousand views on Facebook, but on YouTube it's like thirteen thousand approaching thirteen. You know, it's yeah. You know, so it's it's, fun it's funny that you said something about strange music because I recently just looked at their Spotify and I seen that they're accepting songs for their official playlist. I mm -hmm. went on their website. I seen they're accepting demos. Mm -hmm. You know. Oh shit! You never know, man. A little, you know, that's what it is. A little shit like that. Like you have to follow up on stuff like that yourself. Yep. Ain't nobody gonna do that for you. Mm -mm. You know, it's like that's the hidden shit we do as artists that nobody hears about, and we don't talk about it until something solidifies. Like it's a real plan when it works. You know. Yeah. But that's that background work. Yeah. <laughs> So where you do your recordings at? Like you do it at home, everything. I can I can record at home because I got a good enough setup. And then as far as like uh, like mixing and mastering, I got somebody in Detroit that does that out there. Okay. Um, his name is Trey Pound. He's actually brothers with Shaggy Two Dope. I think it's his uh, stepbrother or something like that. Trey Pound. Um, yeah, he, he he does a good job with his mixing, man. But honestly, it's just the, always the mix that counts the most. I feel mm -hmm. like. Yep. I mean, unless you're recording it on your phone, then it's going to be yeah, ass either yeah, way. Yeah, that ain't right. <laughs> yeah, man. But, uh, man. Hey, you know what, Bissy? You remind me of a, a, a boxer out today, man. You, you look like a, a fighter I watch. What's uh, that? His name, is, his name is Errol Spence Jr. Yeah. I think you yeah, just said yep. Errol Spence. Yeah. I have heard that over a <laughs> yeah. thousand times. A lot, of, a lot of people. You hear that? Yeah. Everybody was like, everybody was like, man, you don't... <laughs> The funny part, one time I went live on YouTube, right? And one dude, yeah. one dude was like, oh, you doing YouTube now? I was like, oh, YouTube now? He wasn't doing nothing else. What do you mean? He was like, oh, you ain't there with I said, no, bro, I'm not. I wish. I wish. You know what I mean? I can't do nothing if the fight with Manny got canceled. That wasn't me. That was my team. <laughs> yeah. I was well, like, man. I mean, he's a... He's a great fighter now. That's because I just like watch boxing a lot. Yeah. So I, I always pick up on stuff like that, man. Um, yeah. Are, are you into like uh, MMA and boxing stuff like that? Yeah, I am. I watch. It. I ain't, I ain't gonna oh, lie. Hell yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. I, I glance at. I glance at. I glance at it now. You know, I'm trying to get this radio station together. Uh, oh yeah, I wanted to ask you because I always ask permission. I just don't do anything. Uh, do I got your uh, permission to play 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 a song with you? Um, not are you good. I need Absolutely, to... man. You can, you right. can play anything, uh, anything you like, anything you find on Spotify. Feel free, man. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. Actually, I was gonna ask you if you were on there. Like, you know, I'll fo follow your um, your playlist on there. Oh, on Spotify? Uh, no, I haven't yeah. got I haven't, I haven't gotten into tune that yet, but uh, I will though. Cause when uh, how do way the radio station gonna work? It's gonna work like a re it's gonna be a real radio station. I'm on I'm gonna be on one hundred seven point one. Series XM Shade Forty Five, you know they pushing for they pushing oh, for the hell yeah. and um, strictly for the underground un underrated up and coming artists, nothing else, you know. That's so. a good. That's a good look. That's a big. Uh, that's a big move right there. Yeah, I, I did some test runs. Um, what was that like a couple months ago? I played uh Snow the Product Easy Meal. Um, what's that? Um, Cutthroat Mode. I played them on. I gave them some radio play too. Um. So I, I, you know, I put, oh, Snow. yeah. So yeah. Yeah, Snow the product was just in a TV show lately. I was watching this random ass TV show. She was in it. What was that Queen of the? This Queen, yeah. Queen, Queen, yeah. Queen, something like that. I believe I had just <laughs> got put on to it, cause uh, cause I had first heard of Snow the product. That song uh, really counts. And then um, 
somebody else, a lot of people in the comic section started to like put me on other songs that she did and everything like that. So I was like, golly, I just not getting heard of her. And one of my friends, yeah, she's pretty good. one of my business partners was like, um, you know, she was in a TV show and he said it and I forgot. <laughs> In it, yeah. So I was like, that has to be her. That, that come on, man. Yeah, most, has definitely, to be her. most definitely. So uh, you got that's a, definitely dope. What about an EP or an album? What you, what you, what you, you got anything working? I think next. I mean, because that was the single off the album. Okay. And I, I mean, next thing, I think I'm just gonna start working on a mixtape. You okay. Because it's like you might as well just keep keep things rolling. Just yeah. keep things moving, you know, like just put put a next thing out. And this is and, and that's the good thing because you put a mixtape in something like that is strictly for getting subs up and all that stuff. Yeah. You know, it's 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 not like any you don't have to worry about it any more than that, but you know I found I found a couple of people that I think you know how you, you, you listen to a couple of people like hey man, I think like I don't know this dude that well, but I think this dude would be dope for a mixtape track. You yeah. Know? Most definitely. <laughs> And you know what? I call that I call that nature right there as in playing chess. Cause when I was doing the mixtapes things, right? You know how artists be like, "Oh, I want ten thousand for a verse. I want that mox money for a verse." With a mixtape, right. it's like, how you right. gonna charge me for an album price? You get what I mean? That's how you play chess <laughs> with them. <clears throat> but the jet, that, but that's when the genuine that's when the genuine side come out because I was doing uh, what was that 2010 I had I did this mixtape called Cold Case with DJ Drama and Cooking Soul and um I was in Texas right and this was the follow up but when I say you'll never know who listening to you uh, around this time I, I had just put out that oh, that Frank Ocean song and I threw another and I put another song out called Diamond Girl which is a stupid song but you know I got show requests off of it but i was in texas and i and i got you know what i'm saying i, I got too hot in the in, in the studio and i want to get some fresh air so i went outside i went to the store i come back out and i see like this tricked out old school never seen it before because in texas they rims they they poke out the, the spokes oh, hell yeah. is it's crazy yep. but seeing it in person i was like what the hell is that dang all right cool man kirk O'Bain come out behind me normal neighborhood yeah this is when he just uh, dropped um, Drinking My Cup. Remember that song? Damn. Yeah. So it was like, what the hell? And he was like, Beezy? I was like, you know me? You know what I'm saying? He was like, yeah, I listen to your music. And then he started naming off songs and little projects wow. I had put out. I was shopping around. like in oh, man. He, and I was like, what? He, like, what? I, he asked me what I was doing. I was like, I'm in the studio. He was like, hey. I was like, shit, let's hang out. He was, I was like, all right, cool. Bet. He ended up blessing oh, yeah. me with a hook. And I was like, Man. I'm waiting for him to... Tr Look, the crazy part is, I'm, he come out the booth, he like, yeah, how you like that? I'm like, yeah, it's cool. I'm waiting for him to give me a price. He was like... I was like, how much I owe you? He was like, oh, man, I don't even worry about it. I was like, what? I just man hotter than fish grease. He gonna have... All right, cool, I'll take that. But ever since then, man, we've been, we've been cool. Um... You know, I do a little bit of production. That's awesome, man. I do a little bit of production on my own. Uh, you know that song, um, yeah. Rich with August Alsina? I'm out the loop with a lot of radio songs these days. Okay, I produced that track. So, um, he blessed me on his album. So, you know, I. You know. Damn. That's, I mean, that's like a lifetime memory. You don't forget things like that, you know? No, most definitely. I guess not. And that's a that's a that's like a, a connection too. It's not just a once in a time thing, you know. Yeah, cause you know I, I produced the track that I that he that he likes the hook for, and uh, he was like, "Damn man, what?" And he was like, "Yeah," cause you know I'm not a professional at it, cause I just watched the you know I worked with a lot of producers, so I always ask questions in the studio, like, "What's that for?" <laughs> What do I need right. that for? And, you know, I don't have my own equipment to make my own beats. So whenever I go to the studio, you know, I already know what to do if I don't have no producer around me. So that's, yeah. What are you uh, using at the studio to make beats? Pretty much they own equipment. Like, I use live drums. Like, that's one thing I'm good with as far as a live instrument. Anything else, piano keys, I suck. <laughs> gonna lie, but <laughs> no, live, live instruments pops for certain things. Like, for example, like a live guitar. You can't beat a live guitar because you'll never be able to, like, you know, play it on a keyboard as well as somebody no. but live. You know, so yeah. it sounds like that. But actually, I like, uh, I've been I've been using Logic Pro for about two years. Logic Pro. I like it, but I'm I'm running out of sounds, I feel like. Oh, snap. 
You ever tried a uh, sample? Nope. Sample bass lines, you got to get a lot of stuff cleared if you get caught on. I never did. Yeah, I stopped <laughs> doing that. As much as I loved sampling, especially using something like Fruity Loops, because it used to be easy as fuck. Yeah. yeah. You know, I don't, uh, I, I just remake stuff now. It's like, man, I don't want to fuck with that. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Yeah, because that could be, that's, that's crazy. Uh, Fruity that's Loops. That's not worth it. Fruity Loops, Fruity Loops I, used to be fun. Yeah, I I never could work Fruity Loops. It was like it wasn't industry standard. I felt like it was a little lower than industry standard, but it was easy. That was the only thing about it. Just yeah, yeah, I, I didn't. No. I went far as in the production, but uh, far as like features or anything like that, what what have you been working with of the artists? Well, besides you know the track you be pushing. Um, for that one, for like the for the album, actually, I got a feature from uh, Blind Fury. Blind Fury used to do that stuff on 106 back in the yeah, day. Yeah, I know what that is. Stuff. <laughs> yeah, uh, he he. Um, there was a contest actually, and so it was like a freestyle battle contest. Mm -hmm. So because I won that, like I I won the verse from Blind Fury for that. So oh, that's that cool. was a good luck. That was, that was fun because I mean. Yeah, I remember that more. It has more value to me now because, you know, it's something you won as opposed to you won out of your pocket and paid him, yeah. you know. Um, but, yeah, uh, him and then other artists that are more, like, in in the category of what Insane Clown Posse could be as far as music. Yeah. They also, you know, they got good names, but Blind Fury is probably the other big guy that's on the album. Okay. Um, yeah, I've, I mean, I've, I've, I've worked with... Blind Fury, I don't mean to cut you off. Uh, Blind Fury been working with a few artists that's up and coming. Like, um, he he worked with Gmo Ski. I saw that. Yeah. I was surprised yep. at that. Yep. He did. Yeah, we did the interview, and he told me that. I was like, what? Blind Fury? But you know, Blind Fury, bro. I'm gonna tell you this. I always like, I always tell people. I was like, um, you never know. You you know, the most talented individuals is the ones that got like less 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 body skills or less or less anything from us so it's like when when i seen blind fury on 106 in park i was like what For, i must have first 16 yeah yeah <laughs> around that time and i was like yo he sound yeah. better than the guy that can actually that's actually looking at him right now you know what i mean and then he did yeah. it I think it was like Rockefeller Records. They had some kind of bat, uh, rap battle thing going on, and he killed everybody in there, too. <laughs> yeah, so... Blind <laughs> Fury was, I mean, like, in that time period, it was like him and Jin. I think they were just, like, whooping ass and taking names. And that was, yep. like, a, that was probably the 90s. But it's funny, because battle rap definitely changed between, let's say, 2000 and 2020. Yep. There's a big difference. I mean, people got way more vicious. Yep. You know, there wasn't there wasn't an arsenal or a, a or a disaster back when Jin was ripping it on uh, 106 and Park. You know? Nope, it wasn't. It wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't either. And plus, everything was like so raw, and it wasn't written down. Like, yeah, every, yeah. I think that's what battle rap messed up at. Like it's not even battle rapper no more. It's like, dude, you 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 doing verse, you doing the versus battle. You know what I mean? It's I, pretty much. It's yeah. like it's it's pre written, pre learned bars, and it's like it's kind of fun, but at the same time, it's kind of it's testing because it's like that's one reason I wouldn't want to do battle rap is because there's no line. That they're they, there's nothing no. they, they can say and do they can do yeah. say whatever you want they can get right up in your face yeah. they have their nasty shitty ass breath right in front of your face <laughs> they get they ain't talk shit about your mom they talk shit about your, your yeah. skin color your Ooh, religion man. whatever everything. they want to do everything everything's I mean if you got a friend that died the other day I'm sure they know about it and they're gonna talk about it yep so mm -hmm. it's like. I don't want to be in that situation. I'm not going to sit there and take that abuse like, fuck you. <laughs> you want to know what's crazy? I'm going to say, uh, it was like 02, 2002, right? I was going to do a battle rap with Murder Move. Oh, uh, shit. I, knew, I know Smack personally. So it was like, when I used to go to New York, nice. I stayed. I was like, uh, I, I go to Brownsville. Brownsville, he stayed down the street. He stayed down the street from the... Mm. In, in the apartment complex that was like three 
three blocks down from my auntie's house out there. And um, this was when he was like selling the DVDs hand to hand. So he was oh, like, he was I like, and and you know, back at home, you know, what I'm saying I was doing my little battle rap thing. He was like, yeah, man, somebody, t you know, somebody told me you battle rap, and they somebody recorded me while I was rapping, and I was rapping off. Rapping in that beat downstairs in the basement at somebody's house, and I don't know who sent him this video, but it was me. And uh, he was like, uh, he was like, yeah, man, you should battle rap uh, this dude named Murder Mook, whatever like that. So I was, I was willing to do it, but it was like, this was like when Murder Mook had like the do rag on, and he was, you know, he was running around, you know, and uh, yeah, and it never happened. <laughs> it never happened. It never happened. <laughs> But when you heard about that and you were, you know, you were thinking, all right, am I going to do this battle or, or not? Did you, did you already realize in your head that if you say yes to this, you, you're going to go in there, Link, and just tear him apart? No respect. It's, it's not like, you know, he's a champ with the belt and you're going to respect that. No. You're just going to have to go in there. And... No, but the funny part was is that I did not know who Murder Mook was. Oh, I never okay. watched. I knew okay. who Smack was. I knew what he did, but I never watched one of his DVDs. Not one time. Gotcha. So when I finally did watch his DVD, when I haven't heard from him for a year, I was like, "Oh, that ain't happening." And then I see who Murder Mook was. I was like, "Oh God, I would dodge the bullet." <laughs> I'm good, but ain't that good? I dodged the bullet. Oh, thank God he ain't answer back in that text message. <laughs> you know how that weight lift off your shoulder? You be like, oh, thank God. Whew. That was one of the ones. Because I seen the battle the battle rap that he did with uh, Sirius Jones. And I was like, man, this dude would have killed me. I couldn't go no rounds. I couldn't remember 16 bars in three rounds. You serious? I was like, yeah, you can have that one, champ. Yeah, man. But yeah, uh, you never know though. You never know. You know, you could have pulled the upset. Oh you no! Never know. Uh, no. no, I seen that battle. I was like, oh my god, he wanted me to battle him. This is a pit bull. He would have. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you know how there's people that you like watching lose. You got anybody like that? You like is like watching a certain person lose. Ooh, who is? It? I like I like it when like um. <laughs> Some of the guys that become rap stars, like Jay Mills, for example, I loved him when Arsenal ripped him a new one. I love it. I loved it because Arsenal was my favorite battle rapper. Like I'm dead serious. Arsenal. I don't know my... how he got away with half of the shit he did. I don't know how he got away with half of it. Ah man, I don't know. <laughs> it's a sport. I don't know. I guess it's a sport. It's a sport. So. He's so disrespectful. It's just ridiculous. Man, and I love it. It is so... It's unique. Oh, my God. Man, it, it's unique. Remember, remember when he battled Enes? Like, he was just, like, saying the most fucked oh, up man. shit to Enes. And Enes was just like, let him battle, let him battle. Let him battle. Oh, but I was like, damn, Enes is a fucking soldier for that because he is, like, taking all this shit. <laughs> like, it was funny as I I gotta admit, like when when I see that Arsenal about to have a new opponent, I have to see it. I have to see it. Oh my god. Even when he was in Detroit, I was in the crowd when they when they did that. I was in the crowd when they came to Detroit. So when he was like snapping off like like even when he's out of state, like he still be disrespectful. A lot of <laughs> My goals are something that I'm trying to make achievements I'm tired of dying now, life ain't nothing but pain Every time I look at different nurses, I think of my name My shit is DC, ain't nobody else like this Come on, stop trying to check, you can't like this I'm so